My dear sisters and brothers, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Bless the Lord, how wonderfully he has showed his love for me. When I was surrounded, when I was afraid, he gave to me all the help I need. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord protects the faithful. We unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving Father, great and wonderful you are. You have blessed us with a wonderful opportunity and privilege to see the dawn of a new day. As we begin this day with prayer in the company of friends, we pray, O oh Lord, that we would experience your hand directing us. As this new day unfolds, may we experience your grace in new and unexpected ways. May we see you as the light removing all the darkness, the strength we need to remove all barriers, and the love to welcome all. Guide us as we now worship you in spirit and in truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. reading is taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 16. It was he who gave gifts to people. He appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, and others to be pastors and teachers. He did this to prepare all God's people for the work of Christian service in order to build up the body of Christ. And so we shall all come together to that oneness in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people, reaching to the very height of Christ's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children, carried by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people, who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. 
Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. Under his control, all the different parts of the body fit together, and the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So when each separate part works as it should, the whole body grows and builds itself up through love. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word.
My dear brothers and sisters, I would like you to join with me for a few moments as we focus on the theme, what you believe matters. What you believe matters. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. What do you believe? What it is that motivates us to continue onward? In our pandemic era in which we are all active participants, the one thing that has caught all our attention is whether or not we should take a vaccine. And there are pros and cons on both sides. But ultimately, it's up to the individual. You can make the best argument for or against. An individual will decide for his or herself what to do. Their conviction, what they believe, will lead to their action. It's the same for the church. What do we believe, or what do I believe, what do the church believe as we continue onward? We must have something to believe in, someone to believe in and to stand on something. Otherwise, if we don't, we'll fall for any and everything. What do we believe? Is it because we are told something that is what we have to do? In the church, we believe because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has commanded us to do these. The command to love, the command to go and to baptize, to teach, they're all part of that structure, that foundation upon which we believe. So as we go forward, as we reflect on that passage that was read, I want us to think of some truths in our belief. I want us to ask ourselves, is our faith really what is our faith? In other words, is my faith an extension of those around me? Is my faith, your faith, what I or you believe? Or is it because this is what I was taught? This is what my parents say. This is what my minister says. This is what my Sunday school teacher said. What is it that I truly believe? Your faith will become in fashion and out of fashion if it is not grounded on the teachings of Jesus Christ. It truly must be the faith that I, you, we believe in. It is individual as well as corporate. It is individual as well as community. You must believe. If you don't believe, it will not last long. Personalize your faith. We need to ask, is your faith working? Is your faith working? What is it that our faith is accomplishing? Faith determines how we live. Our faith will determine where we go. Our faith reflects who we are. And sometimes it's bright, sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's empowering, sometimes it's confusing. Think about the disciple, the apostle, the leader, Paul. He was one that was leading, but he didn't always lead with conviction. He was leading in the other direction because he didn't believe in Jesus Christ. He didn't believe that Jesus could be his savior because his faith was in the doctrines that he knew. And it wasn't until he had that encounter with that he made that confession of faith that he believed in Jesus Christ. Our faith should never lead us to chaos. It should never lead us to confusion, but it should empower us and make us light, make us motivated. We have faith, we say, but are we accomplishing anything with our faith?
If the answer is no, then something is wrong. Is our faith basic? What do I mean by that? Basic faith. Well, what do we believe? If it isn't special to me, if I don't believe in what I see, how would I be able to transmit that to anyone else? If I am not convinced in what I am seeing, will I be able to convince anyone else? Because the most basic of my faith and the most basic of our faith in the church is what? that we believe that it is a faith that is centered on Jesus Christ. Our faith is based on Jesus Christ who lived, died, and rose again. We have to have this foundation because if we don't have this, we won't have anything else. Jesus called his disciples, come follow me, fishermen tax collectors, people who were in a different light, having a life. But when Jesus called them, they left everything and came to him, and their lives were transformed. That is why Peter was able to say later on, the Messiah, that faith became a living reality. It embodied who he was. But as strong as our faith is, do we have doubts? Will there be a moment when we will question whose we are and what we're doing? Yes. No one is so strong all the time that our faith sometimes becomes a barrier that we have to climb over or go under or go around. Even Jesus, strong as he was, when he prayed, he didn't say, Father, I embrace this part with eagerness and joy. He said, if it is your will, but not my will, your will be done. And the love of Christ is this, that our faith, contrary to what the world says, our faith doesn't put us first. Our faith puts our brothers and sisters face. Our faith puts the community of believers face. But we stand strong because we stand not on our own faith, but we stand on that of Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, we must be, as we have been told, you have heard it so many times, spiritual mature in the faith. We cannot still be drinking milk after so many years. We must become more Christ-like, not childish in our efforts. The words that we hear, what we don't agree with, let it simply go by. But let us listen to the words that call us to serve, the words that call us to be challenged, to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And let us not work for any reward except of serving. So what do we believe? Who do we believe in? If we say we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then we must serve him in all that we do. May the Lord continue to guide us, and may our faith be a light shining bright for all to see. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now may the grace, love, and mercy from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us and all those whom we love and cherish wherever they may be, this day and forevermore.